have relinquished my status as Elder God to return to Earth and lead you <laughs> all to battle against our old adversaries. We must act now. We must stop this friendly alliance. What is going on, beautiful people of the internet? We are back again with episode 9 of the Friendly Alliance. A uh, bit impromptu, was planning on doing this uh, podcast after YSB this weekend, so we could be a bit closer to BAM, talk about some results and whatnot. Uh, but as you guys might have seen, some pretty cool stuff was going on around Twitter and TYM and Facebook and all that stuff, so we're going to talk a bit about that. Uh, so with me, as always, above me, I've got Gilbags. What's up, man? Yo, what's up, people? And up the top, we've got Spruce Moose, aka Vlad. What's up, everybody? Uh, we, have no, <laughs> we have no... We have no... Um, guest host today and the reason for that is because uh, after introducing all these people to you guys and telling you a bit about their stories we've had some people come to us and be like well it's cool you tell me about all these other people in your scene but we still don't know anything about the hosts but, so that makes really? sense really well, <laughs> asking that <laughs> uh, i've had a couple of people say it to me oh wow really oh well yeah just That's saying like when are you guys gonna actually <laughs> talk about how you guys got into the scene so we're gonna break down how we got into the scene and stuff as well um it's probably going to be a semi-short podcast. After that, we're just going to do some Q&A. We've got a question <laughs> so far. Yeah. So if anyone has questions as we go, we'll also answer those. And we'll just kind of go with the flow today. It's going to be nice and relaxed. But to start off, I want to take you guys through all the stuff that happens over the last uh, week and a half or so that you probably saw on Facebook. You would have seen me posting an absolute crap load on Facebook. Um, regarding God. trying to build hype for a potential Australian ESL. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'm going to be doing like a bit of a monologue here for a minute. <laughs> uh, so on, what was it? I believe it was maybe like two Fridays ago or something. Oh, it would have been two Thursdays ago. Exactly. Um, uh, Josh, oh my God, Joshua Gray. That's right. Um, the head of ESL or the guy organizing the pro league in the US um, basically mentioned on TYM which you can see in the background that he was interested in hearing about what we have in terms of Australia the interest that we have in um, an equivalent ESL over here so thanks to NACL man for asking the question to get him uh, to get Josh started on the topic because that was kind of like the catalyst. We'd been, yeah. I know, I know, uh, Aaron and I had kind of like speculated about this, but none of us had really um, made an an effort or a particular push to try to get people interested or anything like that. So yeah. NACL man kind of started that dialogue, and then from there, a bunch Should of guys. Exploded. <laughs> yeah, like I, I saw it on my phone. Uh, I I missed Josh's reply, and I saw it on my phone. I was like, crap. I want to write a huge reply to this, but I'm on my phone. I'll be home soon. So I'll just, you know, <laughs> get things going. But then a bunch of other people popped in. Uh, Gilbags popped in. Googie popped in. Um, I think Vlad popped in. Yeah, yeah. Every, everyone chimed in to um, rush in to show Joshua that there was more than one of us interested in trying to get things talking. Um, so you can go to the Joshua Gray AMA thread if you're interested in looking that, at that. And then after, maybe like a couple of days after that over the weekends, um, not much re was really said. It kind of died down a bit until uh, later on, um, he posted in Twitter that hearing some voices from Australia wanting Mortal Kombat X tournaments tagging ESL Australia. So after a bit of a lull, suddenly he tweets about this, which is important for us because it means he's actually thinking about it and it means he's spoken to someone which means a seed's been planted and that was like <laughs> the most important thing for the start that we plant a seed that we want this and that we're willing to uh, be enthusiastic about it so of course a lot of people saw this and retweeted it and liked it and replied to it and all that stuff uh, and from there like I think I was tweeting like crazy a bunch of other people yep. were tweeting like crazy and I want to thank Pyro Pyro yeah. from Melbourne Pyro um, I haven't seen yeah. him at FGC events for a while but he used to be around a lot during Street Fighter 4 and prior to that days as far as I understand um, I want to thank Pyro for chiming in and taking Nick Vanzetti who's the head of ESL Australia um, so again now 
not just ESL America have spoken about it and thought about it. ESL Australia are also aware that we're talking about it and that we're interested in having it. And there's more than just me and Aaron and NACL man talking about it, <laughs> which is important. Yeah. Uh, and he tweets this, which I'm sure most of you saw, a bit of a, a teaser for us, um, suggesting that MK would look good in the Sydney studio. Oh, so, dude, that was, when I saw that, oh my God. <laughs> I think it work, and I check my phone and I see that, and I'm like, this might actually happen, Jesus Christ. Every, I think everyone just was like, what, are you kidding me? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened um, Monday night, I'm pretty sure it was, and then, oh, 18th was the Monday night. So after the weekend, again, there was a bit of a lull, we'd stop talking about it, and suddenly we get, were getting this teaser. And then that's when... Yeah. Aaron and I, we, we, we start talking to each other. We're like, shit, we need to do something more. Yeah. We can't, we can't just like talk on Twitter and that's that. Uh, yeah. We need to do something else to try to uh, show that we're actually serious about this. Yeah. So yeah, go eggs. Yep. I was just going to say you were interested in um, making a survey and stuff. All right. Yeah. The survey uh, monkeys. Yeah. 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 And we um, were talking about it in WhatsApp and I was just at work and I was bored for like five minutes. So I was like, why, why not just fucking make it now? <laughs> like, why not just make this and, and get it going? Cause otherwise we're just going to sit here and be like, Oh, we should probably do it. Yeah. No. So, so <laughs> at that point I did like, I was fucking doing my thesis, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You were busy. You were busy. And like, if it wasn't me or you, I don't know who would have done it. So, um, I was just like, screw it. Let's just, the grammar was pretty bad, but you got what, that really? across in, um, yeah, the, the questions. Yeah. Hey, I, I had two people proofread that. It was pretty I mean, bad, but it was meh. It, it was something. Um, <laughs> so I made this TYM post uh, with Joshua Gray's tweet to show that there is some dialogue they are interested. The seed's been planted. Yeah. Um, so I wanted people to circulate this with the survey. The idea simply being I wanted to do a very quick like scan of the demographic of people who would take the survey, um, just get general information people saying if Wait, they did are... you hear my joke what was what was your joke fuck i said i know it's esl but you don't have to make it look like it <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> that was pretty good. Pretty no good. that was pretty good <laughs> i'll give you that uh, <laughs> what is joke you made in a while but... <laughs> but anyway so so i just wanted to uh you know get an idea of the amount of people who already watch the esl leagues um people that would be interested mm -hmm. in Entering the leagues, if you're not interested, what are the reasons? What can we do to help you be interested? Stuff like this. Um, basically, as a thing to say, look, we're not involved with ESL Australia yet, quote unquote. But if you guys as an organization want help collecting data, we've got this. But we need to know exactly what we can do to help. So this is more about like circulating information, gathering some like rough um very preliminary information and so far let me just have a quick look on my phone we have like i think 160 responses oh, that's not bad which isn't yeah isn't bad at all and that's not just from australians we've got you know a bunch of overseas people from the us from canada from switzerland yeah. there's like some real random stuff in there huh. as well um so a bunch of different countries so it's not just um it's not just us within our little close community spreading this and um and uh sharing the survey which is really really good because the more people outside of our scene that are actually expressing some interest, the better. Because if it's mm. just us, if if we say we really want ESL Australia, we're the only ones that are going to watch it, then that's yeah. suddenly like a whole lot less appealing. So we need to uh, we need to expand as some kind of global thing. And mm. I don't know if I'm spoken about it on the podcast, but part of the reason for us doing this podcast, or part of what I envision about it. The, the reason for having guests on our um, on our podcast talking about recent tournaments and stuff is to get our voices out there and start to almost build characters in our scene because yeah. I think <laughs> Foxy Fox you know those are household names in the American scene than the Europe scenes exactly like <laughs> even even you know KP who I know doesn't play as well as he likes to not like the top of the top in terms of yeah. results he's like a huge personality. Uh, everyone everyone knows Prime. Yeah, exactly. Like people are interested in the scene not because of the game strictly, but because of the story. It, it's reality. It's modern reality TV. That's what social media does. Yeah. 
for these kind of communities. So if we want to be able to market ourselves to a wider audience or get more people than just the Australian scene interested in our scene, then the best way to do that is to humanize the names that people see in our results posts. Because, you know, prior to MKX, I think people knew... If you went to to TYM, it was Tony Tony T's Australian, Nada's Australian, and then Injustice, yeah, Panic Mode. That's it, right? That's, yeah, that's about it, yeah. That's about it. So anytime we'd have to post results or something, we'd have to go through either, because Tony T wasn't really active in terms of results posting, we'd have to go through either Nada or Panic Mode. Oh, yeah. And even then, then you have a results list of top eight or whatever of these names that no one has a clue about. <laughs> yeah. So like the only way you could drag people's attention was if there was like a cool character or something. Exactly. If mm-hmm. there's like a niche character or something like that, and someone's yeah. like, oh, we'll check out this footage. Yeah. So... We need to, um, again, like, that's partly why I want, and unfortunately, Vlad's cam doesn't work right now, but yeah. that's why no I try to, to Vlad, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> why I want to do the stream live as well as have the audio so you can see our faces, so you can see us talking, because yeah. it, it's, it's all about making characters in our scene so people can attach to that. And that's also why Googie is pushing a lot of the newer players, or everyone, basically, um, get on Twitter, because Twitter's where... That aspect. Yeah, that's what the FTC is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's crazy that it sounds. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because like one of the best things about watching ESL, and this is what I was thinking today, it's like you watch it, a match ends, and then you, you go to Twitter, Twitter and you see <laughs> you see everyone's reactions, and it's great. Yeah. It's it's really fucking cool. So that's what we need. If and that's again why I'm kind of streaming and why I'm uh, uploading some matches. I've been lazy lately, but why I'm uploading <laughs> matches with like a lot of different people online so people start to see this name this character this is how they play so the more we can just spread it out the better it is for us in the long term um uh, there's probably a lot more that i wanted to say but continuing with um with that so i made this post start sharing the post around um and the first thing i do when i make this post and put it on twitter is tag a whole bunch of people in the international scene that i think would be interested in retweeting it because that's in my opinion the best way for us to get exposure and of course the first person i go to is my favorite (laughs) kp i I want to meet this guy so bad (laughs) so i'm like kp is going to support this he loves googie he loves nada loves australia (laughs) (laughs) even though he's never been here he's going to help out so not a better impact with the fucking Vegemite bullshit, man. Exactly. exactly. (laughs) He would have to fucking poison them, poison them with that shit. Like we don't even eat that shit, man. Fuck that. You can, Actually, well, you can well, leave the podcast right now if you can talk bad about Vegemite, man. <laughs> I don't think anyone eats it the way it's meant to be eaten. You're not meant to take a spoonful. You're just meant to put a thin layer over some butter. Yeah. Even but everyone butter. thinks that you're meant to eat it like Nutella. It's not how it's done. But... No, no. Like, people introduce it to foreigners the wrong way. No, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fun watching the squad. It is. It is fun. <laughs> but anyway, so I make this post. It gets retweeted a bunch of times. Uh by Katana Prime, uh, Perfect Legends up there. Um, Toxin, Toxin, Honeybee. So yeah, Honeybee. Let's get those Aussies in, air, in ESL. Share, so he retweets it. Toxin. You, know, you, can just, you can just type in hashtag whatever and let's see how much it comes up now. Oh, now we can. So I'm, I'm getting to that in a sec. Right. Um, <laughs> so Toxin retweets it and is talking to Taz and I about it, which is really, really cool. Um, and who, there was a couple other people. Let me just have a look. Oh. Storm, Storm, the um, Austrian oh, player Storm as well. Man. Yep. Oh, uh, Dustin, Godspeed. Oh, yeah. He retweeted. I feel like there was one or two others as well. So we got a decent, um, I'm sure I already said PL, but PL did. A decent spread. I mean, not as much as I would hope, but a decent spread of players who were willing to, um, to retweet it and talk about it. And I, there's obviously a whole lot more players I could have tagged, but I didn't want to be a single entity tagging a hundred people <laughs> say retweet this oh fucking jago blake and yeah. and the yomi gaming actual official twitter he retweeted it mm-hmm. from all that for us which is really really good um so yeah like moral of the story even though the post is a week old if you could still share it if you could pester players if, you know people that aren't me take on board and try to spread this around it would be amazing because if it just is me as one person trying to spread this around it looks not so good yeah because it's like i'm I'm the only one who's actually talking about it 
and I, you know, oh look at all these Twitter posts. Oh wait, no, they're just they're just Cabdoy. Oh, Never mind. All from Cabdoy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, everyone well, needs to make a Twitter man and jump on this. That's right. That's right. <laughs> like dude, I tweeted more that like th- those two weeks more than I have in my entire like you know, how long I've had Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I think it was that day on the Tuesday or whatever. I <laughs> it got to like midday and my Twitter yeah. went off and I look it's all Aaron. I'm just like I said, I said to him I'm like oh shit, you just woke up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> it was at least like fucking twenty retweets and likes and stuff. Um. So what else? Yeah, that's right. So not long after that, it might have been later that day. Um. Joshua Gray posted in the TYM thread again, responding to someone else, but saying, please take a look at the response Australia provided and replicate. Australia, ESL Australia heard their voices yesterday. So one, it means one. You can see we're we're acknowledged. Yeah, we're, acknowledged we're, we've been acknowledged between both entities of ESL, like I was saying before, which is really, really good. And two, he's using us as an example, which to me says we responded in a way that wasn't expected and is good. It, it's yeah. a good thing. We've done a good thing. So when this happens, because I'm backtracking, trying to look at tweets and stuff, and they're all scattered all over the place, and I was like, I should have made a hashtag. So I made a hashtag uh, the next day, I think, on the yeah. 20th. Yeah, so I was like, we need to centralize um, all of our dialogue regarding this matter in a hashtag. So mm-hmm. if, any of the, if any of the people from any of the ESL, whatever, want to quickly find where we're all talking about it, we want to use this hashtag, OzMKX for ESL. So at the moment, there's probably only like 30, 30 or so tweets for the hashtag, probably about a third of which are me. <laughs> so, yeah. so like I understand it's kind of a, an awkward hashtag to throw into to your everyday tweets, um, but if you could start, if everyone could start tweeting with this hashtag, it would be very, very helpful. Um, so if, you know, you could... Like, I, th- I think I just said a bit about myself and why I wanted ESL. A bunch of other people chimed in with similar stuff. Even if, like, even if you watch a match that you think was sick and it reminds you of something that you could link back to uh, getting uh, ESL for MKX in Australia, just throw the hashtag in there. Or if you're yeah. watching the other, the other leagues or anything like that, like I was watching them today and I was thinking, this is sick, but there's all these characters that I know that good players in our scene have that would be sick to be showcased in the top eight. So I started yeah. talking about that with the hashtag. Or if you're watching YSB on the weekends, you can hashtag about it then. All this... Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. Anything else we're going to have that, even if it has nothing with MK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just going just gonna to drop it in. Yeah, like if you can relate it back to our scene and use the hashtag, that would be awesome. Because again, numbers are everything. Numbers means yeah. uh, exposure over a wider network of people, yeah. which means more potential viewers, all that kind of thing. Um, we likewise, all of the odd scene on Twitter, man. Yeah, like we the, really the, do. Like the big capital names are there, but in NRS, yeah, it's basically just us. Yeah, it's like me, you, Googie, Taz, a bit. Vlad, and Vlad, do you even use your Twitter? Um, I should probably use them more. Yeah, they don't I, use it just for this. I man, browse a lot. I just don't post. Yeah, same, same, same. Yeah, I've been a lot more vocal with it. Um, yeah. in the last few months, for sure. But it's it's a good place to see all this shit. Um. And yeah, again, follow what's going on with the other scenes as well. So what have I got next? I've got some other tab open. Yeah, right. So then the next day again on the Wednesday, I think, it, no, it must have been the Thursday. Yeah, last Thursday. Again, another offhand, we've seen what you're doing, but um, but not directly acknowledging our scene. But Nick yeah. Benzetti, the head of ESL, posts lots of interest <laughs> for other titles to receive our support at the moment. We hear all requests, ha- uh, have to get our core products up first. Yeah. So what that tells me is he's heard us. There's, I mean, I imagine there's always people bugging them, saying yeah. we want our game in there. But I think we had at least some sort of a cohesive, um, cohesive That's spread. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With what we did, um, but still, like it's it 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 feels like a lot. But then you think there's like thirty-ish retweets. That's thirty people out yeah. of a huge group that we have um, yeah. that could be talking about this. So what this says to me is. It's good now, but we can't stop talking about it. We can't stop using the hashtag yeah. now because if we just stop, then you know it doesn't look yeah. very good for us. Yeah. So we need we... to show that we really want this. Exactly. We need everyone to show that we really want this, not, not just us. <laughs> we need like legit everyone in. The... Like if we got like wait, how many people in the, in the Facebook group? We got. There's like a thousand. Okay, like, yeah, sure. to a thousand. But if we got like 
twenty percent of them to, 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 to tweet that stuff. That's no, I, yeah. I, I think that's enough to make a, a decent dent. I think so too, because I mean, what what are our um, what are we hitting for Googie's tournaments? Right, we're hitting like, like 40, 50, 40, 50. 40, It's yeah, like it's like forty to forty five on average. I was yeah. Looking. 40 to 45 on average for a monthly tournament that no one has any real, like if we're being completely honest, no one has any real incentive to enter. Yeah. It's a 50 like, do- yeah, like, we don't really, like, Google doesn't really market it anymore. Like, because, you know, you got a whole bunch of guys that are only on PSN and don't even have Facebook. So we actually got to reach out to everyone, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but yeah, what's just, the name behind like ESL? Goddamn. <laughs> exactly. Like, the problem with MK, not, I was going to say the FGC in general, but, yeah. It's not going to be as bad with Street Fighter yeah. Five now that the CPT is involved and stuff. Yeah. But the hard thing about um, competitive fighting games in our scene is that we have so few majors, yeah. and the involvement from sponsors and the prize spots we have are so little for the cost of travel to get around to these majors in Australia. Yeah. That the only people who can really go to all these events are people like us who just love the scene. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, we're like we, you know we've we already established ourselves in it ex- and stuff. Like you know yeah. we we go to the hangout with the people and stuff. Like for the new for new guys coming in, there's no reason. I guess like you know at, at, like the city here is growing more. Like you know with Joe and stuff. Like you know, becoming regulars now. But you know, like again, that's because you know they're, they're becoming grand the community and offline events and stuff. But yeah, for like complete new new people, none there is no incentive unless yeah. you're like unless you're like competitive as like on your own. Yeah, unless one. We get some kind of, um, you know, sponsor backing. There's real money involved. No yeah. money that's significant. Which, to be honest, that's that's something that like I was tweeting about it kind of earlier today. Yeah. I have this weird re- relationship with myself in this game where I play and I critique my own play and I play to get better, but I don't have the I don't have that like next level of competitive drive where I care. Yeah so much about that first place because it's just it doesn't feel like it's worth as much um mm-hmm. like it, it's, if, it's purely just bragging right <laughs> yeah it's like if i get if i get like top eight it, even then like i don't give a shit if i lose early it just depends how i lose i just don't yeah. want to i just don't want to play bad that's yeah. basically it i want to play clean i want to play smart and that's the end of it so mm. i strive to get better because of that but if we had like a pro league, then weekly we have something yeah. to look forward to that has some money on the line, that has real depth to the meaning behind winning that. Like winning, winning Googie's monthly online tournament is a good thing, and it is hard, yeah. all that stuff. But that's nothing compared to being able to perform weekly, make it to a yeah. top eight, and then play well in that top eight. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a ridiculous amount of money, or anything yeah, just, like that. But it, just, like it, even then, it wouldn't even be the money. It would just be like no. a, I'm assuming like you know, it'd be some qualifier. I'm guessing like you no, know, like <laughs> there would like a, a touch of wood, right? But like you know, there would be you know at least one player being flown out if they like pop the season or something. Yeah. So like it, it, even if it isn't money, just like you know, having like qualifier points or something, you know, for like for the final like for the final thing, like that'd be more than enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll just take this moment, ESL, to say, just because the money's not the main priority doesn't mean you should underpay us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I just think, I just think, if we're getting forty-five, um, and we all know that those that there's always people who are inconsistent, like that, that's not forty-five same people coming every month. That's yeah. a mix of people where like up to ten. 10, 10 of those people could be absent one month, but replaced yeah. by other people who were absent the previous month. Yeah. Um, like, if there was some incentive, here's, here's, sure the, tri- here's the, the tricky answer. The tricky part is um, that uh, money and prestige incentive is enough to keep the 45 players who are already playing there, like, to make sure they're consistently there. That brings it up to, like, 55, 60 players consistently yeah. there. But it's trying to get that extra 30, 40, 50 players. Um, it's trying to help help those players who lack confidence because that's the biggest thing I hear. It's, yeah. I don't enter because I'm not good enough. And that's a load of crap, but we need to help <laughs> these players understand how they can learn from what they're doing or how to mentally approach it in a way that won't leave them feeling discouraged. 
that's yeah. going to be the part. And maybe ESL's branding is enough. That like who knows? Maybe there was like with those players, like they yeah. they don't enter because they don't think they're good enough. And with these tournaments, like you know, those tournaments are other. It's the way to gauge your progress, I suppose. So, yep. you know, whether all those, you know, hours and, like, practicing online and, play, and in training mode is enough, or, like, yep. you know, ha- have done anything for your play. Um, so, you know, I guess being too afraid to enter tournaments, it kind of defeats the point where, like, you know, that's where you're meant to see where you stand. Yep. Like, yeah, you might go own two. Or, actually, not own two, own one of these tournaments, right? Yeah. But you know, that's, you know, at least you have, you know, the, that's your benchmark. I, I went own one the tournament. The next tournament, should I go one on one? You know, next one, should I, should I go one, um, two and one? It's like, you know? Yeah, yeah. thing is, do you guys think that if people are too worried about their skill to come out <laughs> to offline yeah. and to play in tournaments like Googie's, don't you think a brand like ESL yeah, would, would be even more intimidating? Yeah. <laughs> that's it what depends. I it depends. Uh, <laughs> one thing, like, kind of like, kind of like not related, but related. Um, First thing I was gonna say, I could uh, I could see the potential of players who are lacking confidence to come to offline events still be willing to enter online events. So I think there's numbers there that you would gain in an online event over an offline event, and obviously the convenience factor that you can play from your own home. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I totally agree. It's it's a it's a hard thing to um to manage, but. That's why we need to talk about it more and yeah. When you find a way more, to like to encourage the new players, yeah, we need more than us and the podcast and Googie in a monthly tournament. We need more people willing to basically talk in our scene because there's no voices in our scene because people don't produce content. But yeah. Also, well, understandably, content production's a bit harder in terms that, of upload that's speed. And shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So oh, man. then we need to go to Twitter and we need to start talking more. We need to be more inclusive. We need to be more inclusive at events um, when new people turn up. We need to. That's what, partly why I'm like trying to run gimmick stuff at yeah. YSB, like the um the the team tournament and <laughs> the MKN tournament coming up and stuff. Potential, yeah. Well, if that happens, we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah. So stuff like that to try and make sure people have a fun time when they come to our events and yeah it's I can just... like you know even at, even at YZ's like no, I can wish I had like you know like like some of the like more experienced players walking around just showing you know, like just giving advice to the new players like yeah. just watch one of their sets and just break down what they did wrong and stuff yeah you know like you, you it might be something for someone completely new you gotta but, be careful yeah. with that in a way though yeah. you gotta you gotta gauge how the players gonna react cause people yeah. are, some people <laughs> take <laughs> some people really take it the wrong way or some people yeah. aren't Real interested life reads. <laughs> yeah. which yeah. which to be honest actually let's all right I've, I've got a few things that i want to say but let's just quickly uh wrap this up so i started the hashtag yep um talking about it there we have retweets from yomi gaming and all this stuff so the next big step is to continue talking about it i'm trying to sort something out in terms of figuring out um what else we can do in terms of if there's other information they need blah 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 um but for now we just need to keep talking and we need to keep tweeting on the hashtag and sharing this kind of stuff because that's the only way we're going to make sure because that's almost better than um an explosive amount of numbers on one tweet consistent consistent moderate numbers which means that we're not giving up so if you have twitter Go on the hashtag and tweet. If you don't have Twitter, sign up for Twitter. Even if you, you don't have to have anything related to your details. If you don't want to have Twitter because you don't want to talk to people, like specific people, whatever, just tweet the hashtag. We don't have to know who you are. As long as you know you have add something of value, then that's fine. Um, I don't know if there was much else that I wanted to say. If I do remember, I'll bring it up later in the podcast. Do you guys have anything else to comment on in regards specifically to this Oz, MKX, ESL stuff? Nope, we keep it consistent. Gotta keep showing that we want this. We need everyone to show it. So everyone, make a Twitter. Goddamn. Yeah. yeah, it's a small amount of effort and that it can really pay off. So yeah. definitely get behind it while, while yeah. you can. Yep. Actually, yeah, God. man, I, I, I just start streaming or whatever streaming, I'll just add the hashtag. I, I, like, was, like, I don't, honestly, like, I don't tweet my thoughts like, like that much like you and Jacob. <laughs> like, the, the, the closest thing I tweeted in regards to my thoughts was, you know, the, that, that history lesson on the, that, what's it called, on the NRS scene. Um, but yeah, it, it, if I stream more, I'll just add the hashtag on behind it and shit. Yeah, I've just been doing that. Um, I'm just going to 
So since that's done, I'm just going to put random footage up in the background. Fun, yep. test your luck crap, because I don't have tournament footage, and I, yep. I'm not going to rip someone else's <laughs> content, so I'll just play stuff from my channel. Um, so, what I wanted to continue with, the thought that I was having. So, we're talking about how, how you have to sometimes approach newer players uh, respectfully, because not yep. everyone either, either, sometimes they don't want your help, or yeah. sometimes... People they're not that they're good at like have... taking criticism. Yeah, or not not even just that, but sometimes like I'm I'm not innocent of it. Sometimes when you think you're helping, you come across as a dick, or you you sp <laughs> you say the words in the wrong way, and you come across yeah. as arrogant as opposed to trying to be helpful. Yeah. Um, but with that, so yes, people at, at that level can be defensive of their play. But relating to what you were saying the other night, Vlad, about mm. how a lot of us or a lot of people in our scene are way too sensitive about their play. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> um, without naming names, I'm trying to think of someone. But, like, I, I guess... Sometimes I, guess... I just think of the way I am, and I just kind of, like, attribute that to everyone else, thinking that everyone's like me. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm a pretty normal guy. I like to think. <laughs> no, <Nope>, far from. <laughs> I think... No, I'm thinking of Vlad's like, you know, you, you got fucking, like, your skin is thick as shit, man. People could, like... Talk, like the most epic trash to you. But inside, I'm crying. Trust yeah, me. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, for me, it's less about like specific examples, and more about the fact that we just don't really talk about it, or we're not that critical of each other. And no. this is this is where people misunderstand. And I'm going to bring up the the man, the myth, the legend again. Um, this is where people, I think, misunderstand Baxter's criticism for arrogance. Yeah. Because when Baxter breaks down, like, and he's done it, like, in comments on videos yeah, yeah. that I've I've done in the past, he'll do further analysis and stuff. And he'll be, like, seriously trying to help in the way he's breaking down, um, breaking down, oh, I've got to turn this other screen off because I'm busy, like, distracted by my own footage. Um, it's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, That's but it's, play. it's, that, it's just, I just, the, the meteors. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, Sometimes I think people can misunderstand him being critical of someone's play for him being critical or rude about them as a person, which is completely not like that. And I think mm -hmm. in terms of improving as a player, I think we all need to be assholes to each, to each other to an extent. You need to be brutally honest if we want to get better. Yeah. Because that's something that I think is a bit lacking at the moment and a bit... It's almost... <laughs> I don't know. We almost need that kind of um. You need some villain in the scene. Yeah, we need we need we need rivalry and shit talk and all that because yeah. it's, it can be constructive as long as it's not like as long as it's like, not like personal attacks or anything like that. Yeah. We don't want no fucking what's it called? <laughs> the Sanford Rico. Hmm? <laughs> oh, oh, oh that. <laughs> <laughs> the fresh maker. Yeah. Did um, someone ask him about that at BAM when Rico came? Well, nope, I don't think so. Was it Albert asked him about the, the playing to win fiasco. What was that? Where was the, that going too the, far into a, it? A thousand dollar money match and then playing to win dodged. Well, from what yeah. we heard. Oh, okay, I remember that. Actually, you know what? I, I derailed this a bit. Let's start talking about um, us and you guys and the scene and all that stuff. And we can talk about, I guess that was Shadowloo. Was that Shadowloo? Shadowloo 2013. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, first one. And so, 2014, 2014, 2014. Oh my god, it's always so much more recent than I No, thought. it was 2013. 13 was, uh, 14 was Rico, 14 was uh, Run Muscle Man shit. Yeah, aren't you talking about the first one, Cabo? Uh, I don't know, but anyway, let's <laughs> okay, just, I, don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't there, so. Let's, uh, um, yeah, let's, let's talk about, we've, I've had, we've had guests, we've spoken about yeah. how they got into the scene and, you know, what got them staying in the FGC and all that stuff, so let's start with you, Vlad, how did, how did you start with fighting games, and how did you get into the scene specifically? Uh, I think most of us started with MK9. Let's let's uh, go further back real quick. Yeah, like, yeah, what was your first fighting game? Bro? Yeah, did you? My first fight, okay. like, karate master with Fox Squad. Back when I was four years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what well, is it like Tony telling about how he played MK1 at Fedorette? Did he? Did Don't you remember? Good? In his interview. Is Tony good at MK? <laughs> Anyways, mm. continue, Vlad. Yeah, and then I was an online warrior like everyone else. And what? No, you still. Group of people. 
It's a back in your oh, back in MK9, I played a lot online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, what the fuck? We, we said what was the first game. <laughs> Let's talk about... Are we really going that far back? Just, yeah, just give us... Give I us... thought you were joking. No, no, give oh us God, a quick... Okay. Just give us a quick thing. So, like, what fighting games you played as you grew up? Uh, Dark Storm is Street Fighter Alpha. And X-Men vs. Street Fighter Marvel's Capcom. Oh, yeah, so nice. I was like full blown retard, like, don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the special moves are I played a lot of Capcom Fighting Gym, Fighting Evolution, which was probably the worst Capcom game ever made. <laughs> I think the producer even apologized for making it. <laughs> Wait, what's his game called? Capcom, Capcom Fighting, fighting Jam. Jam. Or Fighting Capcom Evolution. Capcom Fighting Jam, I've never heard of this. Really? They took oh. games from Alpha 2, 3, Red Earth, and Darkstalkers and just put it in one. <laughs> this looks ugly. But each, each set of characters kept their respective mechanics. So it's basically... Fucking... It's basically Mugen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's fucked up. Oh, man. And, like, I played Deception, I played Lies. Those games are so jank. Oh, but... Me, Pretty uh, fun. You, as jank as it was and stuff, I wish... I wish MK... Like, cinematic, whatever. I actually didn't play Story Mode at all in this game. But I would love to have, like, a Conquest mode again. Holy shit, that was fun. Like I think were... the A or Conquest is kind of shitty though, man. Not oh, yeah, just trials. Oh yeah, no, that one was bad. Deadly Alliance. But I mean like Armageddon and... Um, yeah, Deception. And Deception. They were good. Yeah, it's it's Jinko. You... Yeah. Sit there and fucking meditate, bro. The sun goes past for ages. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fun. Getting with yeah, it was a good game. I did prefer the crit in Deception to the one in this game. <laughs> Alright, yeah, fuck. It's so navigate. hard to get around in this crit, man. Like, you know, for the yeah, casuals, you know, they're losing their shit. Like, this is awesome, but fuck, man. I just want to walk to, like, A1. But I'm gonna attack my fucking spiders and shit, bro. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, reason I haven't really touched the crypts. Uh, yeah, the first four jump schedules was a good idea. Was just fucking kill yourself, man. Oh my god, <laughs> that was the worst idea. It's probably Derek's idea. Alright, <laughs> uh, fucking hell. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, so from that, you go on to MK9, right? And that's I'm assuming the first time you really take fighting games semi seriously. I haven't yeah. played Shelly Monk, too. Competitive Shelly Monk. Man, we should, we should play that one day. We should go up together. Edwin tweeted it, and I think he said, he hinted at a HD remake. I would play that. Yeah, but that'd be sick. nothing came from it. Just typical boon. <laughs> game was really fun. Typical it seemed, boon. Like, when you finish the game once, you can replay it as Sub and Scorpion. Scorpion. Yeah. Oh, that's but cool. But they still talk like Kung Lao and Liu <laughs> Nice. It's really bad. Get the fuck down here. That was so sick. Oh, man. And then, yeah. Bought MK9. Just... I didn't know anyone else, I just played by myself. Mm. And then I added you, I added Cav, all those other names. I don't think I played and you until... Conon, Fuzz. Fuzz, says and probably the all those people. I didn't play I you. Towards the... Yeah. Yeah. Vlad, your, your mic is going crazy, bro. Yeah, slow down for okay. a sec. I don't know. Yeah, no, just, the same. Yeah, whatever. Just keep going, whatever, it's all good. I mean, I'll plug it, plug it back in. I don't think it's that, it sounds more like a internet <laughs> bitrate thing. It actually works. What about that? Uh, not really. Whatever, just what keep going. Do? Just talk. Um, I think, yeah, so MK9 came out in 2011. But I think towards the, the end of the year, someone said something about going to Fiction Light, some Sydney guys want to meet up. Uh, that's the Tony T meetup that we went to. Yep. <laughs> and you were the Cav, me, Nada, Tony. And I think Miles, did he yeah. come? Uh, Miles didn't come to the first one, no. <sighs> Wait, isn't there a photo from this one? And you're yeah, all... there is. Yeah, there yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. And... <laughs> that's cute. The photo's bad, goddamn. I'm wearing a fucking hat. I'm wearing like a Ronald McDonald t shirt. <laughs> yeah, and it was like 40 degrees that day. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. <laughs> And you, he only came for like 20 minutes because you had to go home. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it took two hours to get there, stayed for an hour, went home. Oh, Jesus. Ah, yeah. oh, man. Hey, I, mean, I was in your life at that point. I remember messaging Tony in the forum saying, Hey, man, I know you're from YouTube. I'm a really big fan. It was can so I, lame. Can I come to your house? <laughs> yeah, can I come play some video games? I think Tony was the first, like, apart from online people, he was the first one that I saw outside of just playing online that I found out was Australian. I was like... This YouTube guy, he's huge, but he's from Sydney. What the fuck? This is amazing. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> crazy. Uh, yeah. that was a crazy and then, um, Yeah, went from there. I think we just kept playing online. We did have meetups, but we didn't start any proper meetups to injustice. Actually, you know what? We can we can kind of do this as like a we can tie all our stories together rather than do one at a time. Yeah. 
So yeah, let's let's get you up to speed until MK9, Aaron. All right. Uh, what? I think my first problem fighting game was like yeah, MK2. I remember like Alba brought it home on the Mega Drive one day. Uh, like I was mashing buttons and I fucking did a fatality. Mm -hmm. I lost my I lost my shit, dude. But yeah, um, yeah, like we had Mega Drive, so we played MK2 on that for ages. We played MK Trilogy a whole bunch, but um, yeah. we, we played the whole, like, <laughs> me and Alba played, played the claw grip, so we never even touched block or run. Yeah. So all we did was freeze, spear and uppercuts. Nice. Um. I think the first proper competitive fighting game, like or like slightly less scrubby fighting game, was Tekken Tag. Oh yeah. So we're playing Tekken Tag, like you know, like it was at this at this point it was me, Frank, and my Albert and my other friends, right? Yeah. And we're, we're trying to get pro we're trying to learn fighting games properly instead of just smashing buttons. You know, at this point when we played uh, Tekken, you know, I, I chose Devil and just did fucking lasers all day. Oh man, <laughs> Devil was badass. Sounds <laughs> oh, like Rami's game. True Ogre <laughs> and fucking do five breaths and hope to win. <laughs> right. But yeah, um, Hope they don't know how to duck. <laughs> uh, once I actually wanted to learn like the fighting games properly, or like you know properly, like in quotation marks, or what my perception of properly was back then, um, I was uh, the first thing I tried to learn was tennis combos. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 man. If it's I win this, so, if I learn this, man, no one can beat me. <laughs> so I learned that shit for like uh, two weeks, and then we're like, this game is really fucking slow. So then uh, Albert picks up Tekken Five. And then once Tekken 5, well, once we got into Tekken 5, we actually started learning juggles, and then from there, I guess, we learned combos, and then we thought we were good. Yeah, yeah. Man, DR, I mean, I mean, I guess that was Tekken 5 vanilla, but either way. Yeah, no, yeah, and then eventually we would play DR and stuff. The movement looks so fluid and nice in that game. Yeah, <laughs> goddamn. It's like you're walking on ice, it looks amazing. Yeah, but legit, when I played that game, all I did was, hop, like, mash hop kick and just hope, hope to land a juggle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it was, hop, ki it was hop kick meta in Tekken 5, was it, as well? I don't know. I, I don't know. Like all I did was mash up on three and tr do the knee juggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are you using? Um, well, yeah. Yeah, the first like yeah, actually getting like learning like fundamentals and shit. That was MK9, if yeah. I could call that fundamentals. Yeah. But, like, um, but yeah, like you know, with that again, we we just played a lot, played online. Um, cause I I didn't jump online till like uh, till like maxed the game. Like you know, did all the secret fights and all that bullshit. But you were you were PS3, yeah. Yeah, PS3. Because Vlad and I were both on 360. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The first, dude, oh my god. I remember, like, well, actually, no, we, we jumped on the first day for fun because Frank was over and we were mucking around with it. The first guy we play is Tony T. Mm. <laughs> Fuck it. It's just day one and he's doing 50% combos to me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we, we got wrecked. Oh, we like, okay, we, yeah, we actually had to learn. And then, like, at that point, like, Frank was the main training partner. It was, like, me, Albert, Frank, and we just, you know, we always took turns playing and shit. Yeah. But, yeah, like, we got decent. Like, you know, we understood basic. Mind games and stuff, but you know there was no neutral game. Neutral, my, my neutral game was clone and ice ball, and then when he teleported behind me, I would clone walk forward and ice ball. <laughs> nice. But yeah, um, but yeah, but all that like, and then we went had to meet up at, at, at Tony T's house. Yeah, right, let me um, I'll quickly bring me up to speed and then go from there because I got some stuff I want to bring up with MK9 as well. <laughs> yeah, I, um, MK1. Good old MK1. We had the SNES, even though it was like kind of like prime PS1 days when I was young. I was still playing that SNES. And it was great. MK1 was amazing. But I, yeah, I fucking I destroyed Trilogy <laughs> as well. But I remember first hiring um, Trilogy from the um, the video, video easy store. Poster. Yeah. Oh my god. Isn't that a relic of the past? Video store. Yeah, man. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> from our like local video store, and um. Yeah, like I played trilogy. I, it, <laughs> I I have this memory distinctly. I was with my my gra my nan, my grandma, and um, yeah, I saw Mortal Kombat, and I'd obviously played MK1. I was like, oh yeah, I love this game. It's so good. And I go to pick it up, and she's like, are you sure you're allowed to play this? And I'm like, yeah, I played it before. <laughs> well, I, played it before. I, I would have been like six, or seven. <laughs> yeah. So she's obviously seen the rating and was like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, no, nah, I've definitely played this one before. Like, I thought I had. I, I right. thought it was, like, fine and all this stuff. So I, I rent it, and I go home, and I play it for a bit, and I'm like, oh, this is so cool, blah, blah, blah. And it was all fine until I, <laughs> until I got to the bottom of the pit. So MK, oh, right. MK1's nest didn't have the heads and shit. Oh, so right. I'd seen oh, the, right. Yeah, yeah, because it was all censored, and there was no blood and stuff. So I got to the, like, I'd seen the bottom of the pit. I was like, yeah, this is so sick. I love the pit. And then I see like the torn heads and shit. I was like, 
what the hell is this? <laughs> and I oh, turn man. it off and I run out and I was like, I can't um, look. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I remember this. I remember being like shocked and like, what the shit is this? This is scarring me. I'm so scared. And all this shit is a young seven year old or whatever it was. But then I think I ended up buying it like three years later when I was a bit older anyway and playing the shit out of it. And I remember, um, real life babality. <laughs> remember doing like heaps of the eight man tournaments because then at the end of the tournament you'd be able to like get prizes or some shit and oh, really? you could do like um you put in a code or you got got a choice or something and you could watch like the fatality exhibitions and stuff all right yeah i remember that yeah, yeah remember that. and that shit was badass so i used yeah. to i used to play it just for that basically uh, I don't know, you hold like all the all the triggers and up and start or some shit, and after the screen shakes, yeah. and then you can choose on like one button fatalities. Yeah, yeah, the debug. I never do a fatality back then, man. I couldn't yeah. do fucking fatalities, bro. Yeah, the um debug menu. I remember having a lot of trouble doing. I could do like everyone's fatalities in MK1 except Liu Kang's, because I'm pretty sure it was a 360. Yeah, yeah, fuck that. Yeah, that was hard. And it was like the shittest fatality anyway. But <laughs> no, on the pit, he actually knocked you off. On the oh yeah 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 but <laughs> apart from that on the SNES version, <laughs> all right just yeah did like a flip and then punched you. <laughs> yeah. Actually, like the the sense of sub zero fatality actually looks good. Because he frees you and chatters you. Frees and oh yeah he does his he does his um where's the camera he does his back. like back fist yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then shatters yeah good. yeah that was good. That game was fucking good. Um and I think the MK3 censored version was or the trilogy censored version was just black screen from memory. <laughs> and you just hear the scream and that's it that's um, worse <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um but then yeah like played mk played i remember playing a bit of um a bit of alpha and a bit of um was it might have been x-men versus street fighter whichever the one with shuma garath in it was because i loved shuma for some reason it's a cool like shuma yeah actually yeah, yeah. Uh, no, actually yeah. i played the shit out of alpha as well as alpha like i like, we used to have two pads, right? And, and the second pad we had was like a, uh, it was like some off-brand pad. Yeah. And the D-pad was really fucking sharp, so anytime yeah. we played this game, I had like Cut a crazy hands. blister on, yeah. on my left thumb. And then yeah. got to a point where I couldn't play the game. I remember, there was one bit we played so much that Albert got a blister on his blister. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, I'd always get that after trying to play, play so much. But, um, yeah, actually, no, I played a lot of Street Fighter 2. I remember playing Street Fighter 2 on the SNES, even. And then getting it later on for PS1 with the like half minute load times between matches it was great. But, um, uh, yeah, then from there it was like all Tekken pretty much Tekken and Soul Calibur because Tekken 3 was great, Tekken 4 I thought was great, even though you know, obviously you, you don't give a shit, even though the competitive scene was apparently like it says it's the worst Tekken. Um, what I still think Soul Calibur 2 was like the pinnacle of fighting games. Oh, no. Dude, 2004, I think. It just looks so good at the time. Soul Calibur 2 still, in my opinion, has like the most fun single player mode. Yeah, I think well, that's part of the reason why it got the update. Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, it was a lot of fun because it was like, it wasn't just like gimmicky trials or whatever, but you'd get to like upgrade your weapons and I don't know. It was really good. Yeah, the weapon master mode, that was amazing. It was amazing. And, like, each weapon had like gave you attributes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so well, Mr. Riggs one with Damascus, you put on block, but you did I think more damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never actually played a Soul Calibur game. <laughs> oh my god, like <laughs> so good. I still think that yeah, they're really fun, but I've never like played them properly. Soul Calibur three's think... adventure mode was good as well, but it was like almost, it was it was weird, it was different, but it was fun. Soul mm. Calibur three had a massive save corruption issue. Yes. It fucked me over. Yes, that was it bad. It did. But yeah, I Soul think the only series I haven't explored properly is Cough, but I know you have. Yeah, I played Cough, but that was yeah. So I got into the scene, I guess, before you guys did, because I was getting involved with. Uh, I'm sure it was Vanilla. Um, the very first time I met anyone to play offline was a uh, a guy, uh, another Wollongong guy who I'd never met, posted in um the uh Osado forums he's right. like oh i'm gonna rent out a room at the uni um i play cough and street fighter and blah 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 who'd be interested in coming and then i was like what 16 17 at the time so i came because i wanted to play um street fighter 4 and actually around street fighter 4, before street fighter 4 i was playing a shitload of hd remix because i love street fighter 2 and then between HD Remix and Street Fighter 4, I was playing a shitload of GGPO, so ST and Third Strike. 
all with uh, vanilla as well. But yeah, so I met up with this guy and his mates at the uni, but David Kyok again also came down to play. Oh, um, with CPS2, who I don't think has been a part of the scene for a long time, and two other guys from mm-hmm. Hong Kong as well. Um, and yeah, we hung out and played, and I was like, shit, this is cool. <laughs> and I was using um <laughs> my first stick as an ill-informed poor decision of a stick. It was the fucking this thing called the tank. It's got oh, like oh right, this is the X one. Sorry, the X tank thing. Uh, sure. It's this big black thing, and it's got a it's got an awful bat stick. It's got eight way gate. It's got the uh concave buttons as opposed to the convex buttons, and the super. I'm supposed to get it. It's this one, the, the X one, like the X arcade tank stick. X. Oh, the X arcade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be the same thing. Oh no, not that, not that, not that. Don't uh, be a singular one or something. <laughs> yeah, let me find this real quick. Tank. Oh, okay. Damn, this stick is ugly. Nah, uh, this thing's like, yeah. Here we go. Let's um, let me let me get this up for the stream as well. Oh, what happened to my footage? Why is it frozen? Anyway, I, if you minimize it, it frozen. Let's, let's pause it. I'll put this up and I'll send you the link. This was my first arcade stick, and it was a piece of shit. But I did not realize it at the time. God fucking damn it! <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. And I learned to play stick on that thing. Oh, the, bu- the buttons! The buttons were awful. They were sticky, which was the worst thing. So the first <laughs> time, um, the first time I got my TE, which was like later on in the super days, it was like unbelievable. It felt so so uh, good to not be playing on that awful stick. Jesus. You Still better than MK9 Collector's Edition stick. Hey? <laughs> oh yeah, that was bad too, wasn't it? Not that I played it, but that was bad. Um, but yeah, I guess like, and then from there, not long after the Street Fighter would have been getting into MK9 and playing a shitload online, where I, I'm pretty sure the first person um, that I like really spoke to and got to know uh, was Fuzz. Yeah. Because like, I I learnt MK9 by watching combo videos and emulating. Because I yeah. didn't know what what better to do, so <laughs> the first character I picked up was Jade, and oh, I would wow. just like do the do, 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 what was it a back one I think it was the back the, one the multi all oh, right yeah yeah, yeah. The, yeah. swipe your face left right left right yeah 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 um doing a bunch of those combos and uh, I think at the time I was playing in a cough with uh, and Fuzz was in there and I played a bunch of different characters. And he sends me a text afterwards, and he's like, man, man, I need help learning these characters. I see you play heaps of characters, and you're so good with them. I, I need help with Striker and Sindel, and I was like, dude, no, I can't help with those characters. But then we started playing more often. Then I met Five Star, Milo, yeah, Miles. who admittedly, based on the way he played Kung Lao, I was like, this guy's a fucking asshole. I hate this guy so much. <laughs> Because <laughs> he well, had a re- the dickhead style of that what random spin. It was, yeah, it was just, it was just no. <laughs> a spin spin at times like you think you'd condition him but you couldn't and yeah it was that kind of shit and you get hit by spins and it'd be awful and yeah and then because I don't think yeah Vlad I played kind of like early on and then stopped and came back and I don't think I played you until the the part where I came back because I think what happens um I stopped playing and then. I was interested, and I think Milo, Milo was like, oh, let's do... I think it was like Mortal Mondays or something. You wanted to have coughs on a Monday afternoon or not? I so yeah. He's record sets. So, I'd, yeah, I'd jump on and... Um, oh, shit, I fucked up my thing. Um, yeah, I jumped online in the cough, and I think through the, uh, Fuzz and Miles is where I met Cav, who also I thought was an asshole. <laughs> okay, was... Jacob, so much hate, man. No, no, no. That, <laughs> it was justified for Cav because I was, I was like one of the only people playing Cabal. Like I saw Michelangelo play Cabal. I was like, I'm gonna play this character. So I was like the f- one of the only people online playing Cabal. Yeah. Like when it first, like early on. So when I yeah. came back and I wasn't playing Cabal as much, but could still play him. Suddenly there was Cav. Yeah. And um, I think Fuzz and, and Miles had spoken to him and said, like, oh, man, this guy, he's got a really good cabal or some shit. And he's like, oh, fuck this guy, I've got a better cabal. And he, <laughs> first match I play him is a cabal mirror. Yeah. And I'm just like, who the fuck is this guy, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 the portable, who won, who won? Uh, I'm pretty sure he did. 
All right. Then it's off the wood. So I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And then, yeah. I, I, always, I, don't, I always feel like everyone online is an asshole. Yeah, yeah, everyone, yeah, like, did you, did you, Vlad, now, Vlad, like, you're the biggest like, asshole right? we're talking about. The other week, I had a set with Boy, you know, uh, he plays Jax as well. Yeah. And obviously, I don't know the guy because I don't play online. So no, anyway, we had a set, you know, I lost and stuff. But even the whole time, it's like, this guy must be a fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> this message, like, bro. Anyway, I'm like, oh, you too, man. That was fun. <laughs> so like, 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 I'm gonna you. destroy you and Bab. I can't fucking wait to play you and Bab. I'm gonna get all my fucking revenge and shit. Like, the, until I talk to you and you realize that they're not just like a no, name no. The difference online. was the difference was I was in I was in parties with Cab. <laughs> it, was, oh, right. it wasn't just oh, him. Wow, okay. Yeah, it was him, it was him literally being like, I, mean, I could beat your cabal. <laughs> like that's what? <laughs> yes. Wait, wait, wait. Is it just you and him in the same party? Or no, no, no. Everyone... Like the four of us, me, me, Fuzz, um, Miles, and Cap. Like it was legitimately him. All right. <laughs> saying no, I... I'm better than you and shit. Like, well, not not that blatantly, but he'd be like, "Oh, he's not that good." Shit like that. Like this, <laughs> this is what young Cab was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish Cab Cab would come back to this game, man. Fucking hell. Eighteen year old angst. Yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, it was Cab would get like a. You know, like, you know, Cam's a sick card man, but god, man, that guy got mad salty back then. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> I still remember he like, even changed his name because his win loss got too bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, what was it? Demise it to this day, but I don't know. <laughs> Cam, please come back to the scene. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it, man. <laughs> man, I, I just remember, man, like, was, like you know, at Tony's, right? You know, like, I, was in, I was in like year 11, year 12, right? So I was like 17, 18, right? So like you know, I could never like you know play long set. So, like you know, I, I'm in and out, right? Because I had to go home because my mom fucking killed me, right? Like, do I remember the, the first time we went to Tony's? You know, like I'm talking to Albert. You know, like obviously Albert doesn't tell my parents what the hell we're going. Otherwise, I think they wouldn't let me. Like, there's no there's no way in hell they'll let me go to some strangers' house to play video games. Yeah. You know, that's how you lose your kidneys and shit, right? <laughs> anyway, so like you know, I'm full. You know, Albert. You know, he full gives me the rundown. Is like you know, this is the code word. If you're under duress, say this, and I'm sending to some shit, right? <laughs> So, oh to god, um, we get there, right? We play the sets, right? And after, like, you know, I, I didn't play that much because, well, um, you know, we had two setups and there was like four of us, five of us, right? But then I, I played Cab one set before I go. And I, th I think I beat him pretty convincingly, right? But then, like, I gotta go because I gotta catch my bus to get home, right? Um, and then, fucking, what's it called? The, the same thing happens the second time. We play again, I'm pretty sure, right? But then, actually, the, the second time we come, uh, the second time we have a, a session at Tony's. Um, I didn't get to play him because, uh, again, there were too many people, so I played a few other guys in the left, right? And then we had the session of Marlowe's. <laughs> oh, God. Right? So, <laughs> again, I wasn't here for any of this. <laughs> yeah. So, at Marlowe's, right, like, you know, <laughs> Cav, uh, it was you, Shay, and um, Cav Fuzz. come together, right? And Fuzz, too, right? Yeah. And then the now first it. thing Cav says is, alright, me and you are playing right now. <laughs> like, he wanted that. Uh, no, maybe he did it right, but it just felt like he really wanted that one that run back from like you know fucking six seven months ago. <laughs> that would How that one go? Uh, I think I think I made him pretty convincing as well. <laughs> it was my Scorpion versus the Scarlet. No wonder the guy left. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking cow! Uh, we need him dude, back. My, dude, my Scorpion was sick, bro. In that game, go on. He's he's that yeah. dynamic in our scene that we're lacking right now. Yeah, no, we need. Well, okay, this cow could be the villain. You know, <laughs> Cav, you're the villain we need, not the villain we deserve. He, he was the original demo Sonya before demo was a thing. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. But see, like you know, Cav always wants to be a hipster, man. He like he wants the yeah. character main yeah, doesn't he use does. him anymore. You should play Duelist. <laughs> yeah, fuck, man, do that. Fuck, Duelist is sick, man. I, I, I should want like, yeah. dude, you seen the Fire Blades of Duelist? Hey, yeah, Fire it was very entertaining. Very entertaining. Fun to watch. Very entertaining. Cav, fucking listen. You're not gonna listen to us anyways, but if you do, fucking come back, you fake it. <laughs> So oh, he'll um, listen to it. if he knows his name's in there, he'll listen to it. Alright, good. Me. Cav, come back. Alright, we miss you. Alright. Don't wait for fucking cough. Come back now. Alright. I also played a bunch of cough. But anyway, so <laughs> was it before or um after some of the Tony T sessions? Because I, I still remember I, for anyone who's interested, Aaron was the reason that MK9 kind of became a thing at YS at um YSBs. So was it before or after the Tony stuff that you started posting on Osado asking about MK9 All right. Um, it was, it was, end of 2012. So it would have been after Tony's. Yeah. yeah okay. When's yeah, Justice was... 2013? Yeah. It's uh, I, don't know, I tried to get MK9 at um at OHN. OHN, yeah. OHN yeah. X, I think. Yeah. yeah. And they were like, nope, the game is banned. We can't do this. I'm sorry. And we're like, oh, I'm sad. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, like you know, push for that. Like you know, posted on every single forum. Had it like, you know, I, I, like you know, I remember the forums. You can only make a thread if you 
like had this many, this many posts like you know, so it wasn't like a you know, like a, a bot account yeah so like you know, I was posting just like bullshit responses in threads just to like to make, to make the quota so I could make the thread <laughs> no which end nice man like I, I was legit on every single forum asking for this and uh, dude, I think at that point like you know like you know I had a list of people who were interested right and I think we had like 50 entrants like from across the show yeah it's like 40 50 which is fucking sick but then, you know, and then everyone got sad because the game was still bad. Mm. <laughs> oh, you know what, my, my, dude, my favorite part about it was the game got oh, it got got um allowed or it got like what was it what like we, we had the R thing so it yeah the R S thing stuff yeah literally yeah. the day after they announced the lineup for uh, all the oh that's rough oh that was the worst that's rough I can't believe but, we used to put up with the online for that game man. <laughs> we probably was online for injustice. Oh, yeah. well, you didn't. Well, like cool. I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so like, come on, we, we had nothing to base it against here. Yeah. We, we weren't playing online that much. You know, I didn't know what the fuck a laggy TV or the TV was. Like, you mm. know, back when we used to play Tekken, you know, Frank would always complain like, dude, I think your TV's laggy, man. You know, like I can't do my combos. I mean, Albert's like, stop, stop, stop making excuses, Frank. You know? <laughs> 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 Don't say <it> was right. <laughs> I think I just luckily avoided the input, the TV latency issue that most people seem to go through. Because right. I was using like a fairly small TV and it's got no. No real problem, but all right, dude. I, I go back and play on my, on my original TV. I can see ghosting <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> That's how bad it was. And I, I used to play on this shit. But you have that plasma, right? Yeah, the one at the back. You know. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not even plasma. It's LCD. Oh, so, damn, man. Yeah, there was ghosting. It's fucking bad. But anyways, yeah, like yeah. So with OH, OH and X, it, it, got, it got denied for that, and we brought it in for YSB seventeen, I think. That was our first YSB. How do you remember the numbers, man? <laughs> because I still got the footage on my external hard drive somewhere. <laughs> Burn it. I <laughs> <laughs> see all the ghosts come out. Was that, was that the footage where I played Blood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's when I did the Unbreakable combo in the last yeah yeah quarter, yeah. That was pretty good. You know, the only reason I remember I'll that is because you fucking boast about it every time. <laughs> keep the hard drive, keep it. <laughs> no, the, the, that footage, um, that's what, uh, what's it called? Nada has, has that one because he got it from Dave. Because Dave recorded for us, remember? Mm. Mm. I wonder, just thinking about it, I was watching, um, I was looking for something in the Facebook group and stumbled upon Nada posting ages ago the set of Rio versus Smoke in that Canadian tournament. You know, the oh, one yeah, where you got so good. the parry glitch? Yeah. Yeah, I'll see. Just watching like the Counterpo game and stuff, I wonder how much the dynamic of MK9 would have changed if we knew the exact numbers. Like For reckon, Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon much would have changed or not really? It was no. It still, it's still the like you know the frame data just proved what people knew about the counter poking in general. Like it, it just solidified what could and couldn't couldn't happen. It only messed with characters like Scorpion where you realized you couldn't press buttons even if you poked them on hit. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Oh, yeah. no, same deal. I don't know, because Scorpion getting away with a lot of down three into other shit. And his down three was like minus six, eight? Okay. Minus six. Maybe it would help, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, was... <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I wrote that I was telling you to stop, like, using down three as a poke as a negative one hit, and you wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. You never listen you to me. You probably didn't know that, man. <laughs> yeah, like, if you told me that. When I was playing MKN, I wouldn't have had a clue what you were talking about. Oh, really? No, no like, no, dude, like. Heretic. My, my, most of my learning in fighting games, um, and all that stuff has legitimately been from the start of MKX to now. No, seriously? I feel, I feel like I already had, like, I kind of just developed, like, a decent neutral and stuff like uh, that, and I kind of had a feel for it, because I've been playing games for a long time, Yeah. but I didn't really talk about games or, like, understand super well, um, you know, like you get a f you get a feel for when things hit, yeah. you can't press a button and shit. But it didn't really make sense until I understood why. Like for example, I was watching the BAM footage again yeah. the other day, and <laughs> I mean, Corn can kind of get away from with it, but like I was doing, I wasn't confirming down threes and shit. Yeah, no, down three, back three. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, was it that because back then That's that strange. was plus. That was actually plus. No, but like I was on down down three back two for example, which can definitely be interrupted and shit like that. Yeah, right. But it's like I I didn't have a real good concept of what was plus and negative and all that shit. Like if someone because yeah. I, I I was listening to Burnout's commentary and he said something 
oh, and this movie is advantageous on hit or some shit. And I was like, if I listened to that back then, I probably wouldn't have really understood what he meant. Oh like, God, I that... legitimately learnt so much in BAM weekends, and then between BAM to OHN, and then from OHN to now. Oh. It's like, it's just been, a, like, a solidification of the, like the, the messy... You, you, you knew before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, like, I think, even though I was kind of going to some of the offline stuff since super street fighter and stuff like that it wasn't consistent and yeah. i didn't again like didn't really talk or understand the game that much enough to talk about it and learn that way so you'd still just be like playing games and figuring it out on your own yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I understood frame data once some someone has made his threads and shit yeah which would have been like early 2013 or like late 2012 like i think i think i had a it's hard for me to say because i don't remember what i did and didn't know I think I had a, a general understanding of it, but just didn't apply it. Oh. But yeah, anyway, go on. Is that, yeah, 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 you know it, it exists, you just didn't know the actual term and maybe its exact workings. Yeah, exactly. But you knew it was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it wasn't completely um, foreign to me. It wasn't nah. completely foreign to me. But that, I, I remember I first heard of frame data back in like, uh, back when we used to play Tekken, it was Frank used to count frames back then. And me and Abel were like, nah, man, we're getting casuals, man. Right, well, we can beat him without knowing frames. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Frank's hardcore, you know. This, this fucking nerd fucking looks at frames and shit. We'll beat him without knowing it. And Frank used to bop, it, bop us. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, that, like, if I go to my progression in fighting games, right? Like, MK9 didn't teach me footsies. <laughs> Legit. No, MK9, like... Uh, go. When I go back and watch it, I'm like... <sighs> spacing and whiff punishing was kind of there but with punishing looked hard in that game yeah it's it more about like dashing in between stuff and but i don't know it's, mm. it feels awkward like you, you with punish for pokes and you played with evangel pokes if anything yeah like any few characters had advancing normals or like you know things that could catch limbs to play proper full suits which are like sonya and cage basically yeah like foot everyone says it was like the footsie game but i don't know it looks almost less... yeah like I don't know, it sounds like when people think footsie is mk9 they just think consistent anti which is fair enough yeah but yeah. I thought it was just consistent down pokes. Yeah, that's consistent down pokes. Because <laughs> exactly. everyone was just throwing shit like down one, down threes, like willy nilly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Again, like, yeah, yeah. It was poke footsies. Well, like, yeah, you, try, you try to catch limbs up down four, and after every hits, then you'll start your pressure game. But even then, like, seriously, like, I didn't learn footsies for playing that game, man. Like, no. clone and a zero and block down four doesn't teach you footsies. I just dash down four all fucking day, and people didn't do shit. And then I'll, I'll do dash down four, dash down four, ice clone, and then you try to jump my next down four and jump into the ice clone. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, the game is like you know, like good fun. I mean, not good, like consistent anti S, but there was no problem with punishing, man. Unless you had good advancing normals or you're Johnny or thing or something. Yeah, I think I just learned footsies from playing a shitload of Super Turbo, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think that's just how I kind of developed a general sense of spacing. But then you go to injustice. Yeah, injustice like... was patchy. For me, at least. <laughs> yeah, the justice neutral, like that, that. I guess the justice neutral taught you, like, to understand focus, like you know where where people had their attention focused, right? Because the meta for that game was about dashing and jumping, right? You yeah. dash like a maniac and you, and you jump like a maniac, right? If you're focused on punishing the dash, you you late to anti air because anti airs were like were weren't, weren't the most consistent thing. But you could anti air, but if you if you're focused on anti, obviously now they dash you and pressure you instead. So yeah. It was like you know it was just the basic you know like air game, ground game, mind game. And then once you sort of established that you could run that, um, there was a kind of a footsie game if you played one like the footsie characters. But this is like a, they actually, you know, there's actually a genre of character in, in footsie characters because of how <laughs> poor like normals were in that game. You know, <laughs> yeah, like the footsie characters were Green Lantern, Superman, and Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, they, yeah. They yeah, could yeah. Have I see that. I see that. Um, potentially Catwoman is a four dollars good as well, but again, like most characters had like stubby limbs, so you like everyone was Jackie, but without like godlike running and walk. Shout out to Josh. <laughs> um, but yeah, the injustice was yeah. That was just more like like turn based stuff, but yeah, it was still fun to play. Did Crazy you, Oki. Did you only play? Like yeah, I feel like I feel like injustice was a lot about shit on knockdown. At least when I was yeah. playing. Yeah. But um, <laughs> you get enough and play some Crazy Oki game. Bait wake up to punish it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so did you only play Joker for the whole life of that game? In, in in I played Batman against like Nat, uh, against Nada twice in tournament because like, I got wrecked in Winners Final using Joker. Yeah. But like by the end of the game's life, yeah, I, I ran Joker for every match. Yep. And who did you play? By? You started with Green Lantern, didn't you? I played Lantern and Bane. 
mainly lantern. And then towards October, I picked up Nightwing. I played them both, and then eventually just exclusively Nightwing. Nightwing was fun. It was really fun. I think he's a really good design character. Mm. And I was telling this to Blake before that. He had overhead and low options, but the low was always a lot worse, or the overhead yeah. was a lot worse. Yeah. So it's oh, kind of like conditioning stance. poke. Yeah. Yeah. So like in the stick stance, overhead he didn't was... have a good low. Yeah, yeah. Overhead was really good. Yeah. But he essentially just had like a sweep. Yeah, you had so... ground pound to the low. No, I'm talking about Eskrima. Was <clears> right. Was um. Was ground pound low low or mid low like rune? Low low. No, low low low. But yeah, and like so it's pretty much just a mixture of mixing up pressure strings, grabs, yeah. and just annoying them with lows and stuff. Yeah, because he technically so, had no mix up. It was just like how well you could block for you know for this long. So it was quite frames decision, yeah. and just yeah. <clears throat> it was cool guy. Very fun. <laughs> but no antias. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, antias are bad. <laughs> I don't know, Vlad, but we're down too. I'll jump at him and we're down to again. <laughs> and actually still anti me. Fucking hell, bullshit. <laughs> uh, I think I only played Shazam. I played Grundy. Shazam a lot at the start. I'm sure I would have played other characters. Like, I dabbled with Aquaman because he's easy as shit. No. Um, oh, no, I played Cyborg a shitload at the start, too. Fuck, Cyborg is so bad. <laughs> yeah, man. That's that was zoning. the one character, just, yeah, like, there's the only zoning, one that The there. zoning fiasco at the start of that game, holy shit. Yeah, full screen block infinite. Yeah. <laughs> mid fireball, we thought that was good. Mid instant air fireball. <laughs> oh, shit. Because the character was cool because the, he actually chipped to death, and after, like, any time, once you got broke that range, he just made a bend the fireball, it's plus enough, he does whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. And he got like really, really chunky da jam damage. In the oh, yeah, stand three in the DP, <laughs> meter yeah. burn stand three. <laughs> yeah. That shit was fun. Nah, I can't find too. But Getting then, sick. like, I think I, I only really touched Grundy after that because I stopped for a little bit and then came back and played Grundy and then stopped again before the the real patch that made the game good. <laughs> yeah, man, the game was so good. And the, actually, it wasn't so good as Martian and Becca was still dumb. But the game was fucking good. <laughs> oh, man. I'm interested um, to see what they take from Injustice 1 and MKX to boy, come up I with. I got to. Yeah. See what blend. Hey, Vlad. You still there? Hey. Do you remember doing SS, uh, our third game of our set for In Losers, where I parried you at the start of the round? Uh, I probably actively repressed that memory, so nah. <laughs> oh, man. Unless you have video footage. Didn't did. happen. Yeah, it is. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I believe you. <laughs> oh, shit. Seriously, like, you know, dude, like, we haven't had, oh man, like, come on, my, my double parry versus boss logic, during the team's all of it. Yeah, that was hype. Oh my god, nothing is, like, matched that level of hype. Actually, maybe, like, Arnold, Googie, like, grand final. Did he used to play, De uh, what's his name, Doomsday? Do yeah, Doomsday. Yeah. That one, Urshak, all day. Hey man, good shit. Actually, you know, one thing Justin did teach you was really good defense. If you had good defense in the game, goddamn, you could go far. So mm. Frank was good? Yeah, man, fucking Frank was a monster. He played I remember too, like, right? Huh? He played Lance. He played Aquaman and uh, Black Adam. Oh. It was him and Albert, like, you know, they played long ass sets, right? This was when Albert was still, like, pretty hardcore playing, right? Yeah. And they would, like, play long into the night. And, like, at, like, at his peak, it was impossible for you to open up Frank with Black with Batman. He would block every Philo mix up and take every throw. Like, Albert nice. was content with taking, like, chip damage from what's it called Batarang meter burn <laughs> like he, he'll play the block string press just to build bar just to just to chip him with meter burn Batarang because he couldn't open him up couldn't you build a shitload of bar from one meter burn Batarang anyway yeah like you build a shitload of bar in the game in general yeah and you have four but, bars hmm. yeah if you had good defense in the game man, it was, that was really entertaining to watch like if, if you, do you remember like the like the, the, the 30 second block string whatever it was or freaking what's it called Forever King against his brother mm. Oh, man. No. Okay, it wasn't a true block string, obviously. There were gaps, but like the fact that he could block all that perfectly for 30 seconds. Yeah. It's a all bit like... nice. Mainly luck. I mean, at that point, was 30 that seconds. Was that Good luck? reads. Is wasn't wasn't somewhat Batman luck. stuff reactable? Yeah, all of it was reactable. You just had to be on point and completely focused to block it all. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, <laughs> it was God like David. You, you're going to mess your block up at some point throughout, throughout it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's, um, what was the first event you guys traveled to outside of New South Wales? Uh, SS, 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 SS,
Yep. Yeah. That's where we met all the guys in the bar and shit. Oh, I remember. Oh, fuck. That was like a month or two. No, it would have been like a month. It would have been the same period of time after release that MKX was, hey? Like, it was like a month or two months after the game came out, wasn't it? Oh, right. Uh, no, no. SS was like in September. Around there. Yep. Wait, no. Fuck. Oh, no. I'm just thinking of um, Bam. Was, was, why is being Bam, yeah? I just remember. I remember watching Bam. Um, yeah. Nada went up. Well, I went down. They lost to Baxter Grand Finals. Was that didn't Glassy come like third or fourth? Yeah, it came third. It was Nightwing. I I just remember watching Wait, was that. that SS? No, no, this is Bam. Oh, right. This was um. Wait, we didn't go to that. Did no, we? I didn't. No. I didn't. Oh, but I remember watching that and like being so frustrated. I was like, "Fuck! I wish I was there," because like people were getting opened up by stuff that I knew how to deal with and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, these guys don't fucking know anything. <laughs> They're all scrubs. <laughs> Which, to be honest, was semi-motivation um, to go to BAM for MKX, because I hadn't travelled until that outside of New South Wales. Oh, uh, shit. Got them. Got them. Yeah, no, no, I hadn't. And I think it was just like a random Skype call with James and Cav. Uh, fucking Cav and Vlad. No. And they were just like, oh yeah, we booked our accommodation. Like, they were just talking about it amongst themselves. And I was like, oh, what are you guys talking about? And I was like, oh, yeah, you should come. You, should, you can sleep on our floor. I was like, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> and then I was like, having flashbacks to, yeah, Bam with Injustice. I was like, I don't want that shit to happen again. I don't want everyone to go, me sit at home and be like, I could have fucking done good. No. <laughs> so I just went. Ah. Well, yeah, they damn. This is 2K13. There, there were internationals at that tournament. There was, there were, like, they weren't in, injustice players per se. Yeah. It was a run, run mine and what's the other? Something Joe. Joe Shine. Joe mm. Shine. Oh, wasn't one of them a cough player? Uh. Or is it something else? I might be thinking. Run Muscle Mine was a Marvel player. I'm thinking of something else. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's a cool year. It was like the, 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 they were at Flemington that year, and they're like a sick venue. Like the sound of like Nightwing. It's a bit out of the way, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> we got lost when we get there. Them. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. High, though. is that where? Oh, the chat. Oh yeah, 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 I know where it was. I know the venue. I went there for a couch for isn't it once? It's near like some race course, I think. Yeah, Flemington race course. Actually, yeah, shit. Now it's in the city. I just remembered. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I went to a couch for event in Melbourne. That was. I have a feeling that was actually the first time I travelled. Uh, the first offline event, like real offline event, I went to, and it was a wow. Melbourne event. Oh shit! Because I was I was just in Melbourne on like a family holiday, and I was like, I'm so bored. All right, you're like, I'm, I'm gonna like go yeah. ditch you for now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I found out about it and went, and then yeah, like I met Muttons and Pyro, and um, I mean, I didn't really talk to Berserk that much, but I did meet him, mm. and um, yeah, I met or like Jane Links as well. I met a heap of people. Mutt, yeah, Muttons was like the guy who told me about it and got me there and stuff. Muttons is awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I just, sorry, you just reminded me because I was thinking of Yeah, <laughs> uh, well. I just distinctly remember saying, oh, it was my first offline event and I haven't, you know, I'm from Sydney and I went to a Melbourne event, so. <laughs> I, I played Pyro. <laughs> he was like the only cough player there and we just played cough rages and he bodied me. He's probably getting Shut bored, them. but yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. Anyway, uh, so yeah, you had Shadowloo, and then... We had... Was... Me and Vlad went to BAM. Oh, we had OHN after, I think. We had OHN. Yep. Yeah. Actually, wait, did we have OHN? We, we, haven't, we haven't got OHN, to the OHN. OHN used to be at the start of the year. Yeah, it? so we, that, we, we had OHN in 2014, then, okay. before that. So we had BAM before then, we had BAM, yeah. Me and yeah. Vlad went to BAM. There was only one o OHN for Injustice? Yeah, 2014. Yeah. And then you and me went to BAM. Yeah. You came third, second, I second. came fourth. Oh, okay. I think Josh came third, right? Yeah. And I came fourth. That's a pretty good order. Got my wicked Adventure Time Season 3. <laughs> yeah, we're just still trying to play Never one. forget. You guys keep talking uh, about I'll that for it. a sec. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, and we had an EV Expo somewhere in between. Oh, there. yeah, EV Expo, goddamn. That was pretty legit. I mean, it was just like a big YSB, but. Yeah, that was smaller. We didn't like eight people at that tournament. That, I, uh, I got was, wrecked in that yeah. tournament. Yeah. Who'd you, who else did you lose to? I lost to Xavier. Yeah, and he came that. second, or no, he came third. I came second. Yeah. Oh, the EB experts so came first. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah, I, I was like Xavier and you for a fucking hell. I remember he came third and you got a better prize than me. I was trying to trade, but he didn't want to. <laughs> Wait, what, what, what the hell did you get? 
I got the headset, which oh, was alright, it was pretty good. And I got Mass Effect on Blu-ray. Nice. <laughs> there were some weird prizes, man, I don't know. Like, I always wonder where they come up with these prizes. Who cares, it's free shit. Fuck, stop on yeah, <laughs> Like, Adventure Time Season 3, I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's just random shit, let's give Season 1. I don't know, it doesn't matter, but yeah. But the band video was good. But you, you, yeah, lost, you, you lost in third strike this, I don't know, some random. Oh man, I, was, I sucked back then. You lost to a soul player or something, if I remember, if I remember correctly. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh yeah, I did, I did, I remember that. Oh yeah, I need to stick around back versus Babel in the Hulk. Was he got wrecked in, uh, in winners against the Hulk girl? Was that that bam? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, wait. Yeah, no, that's where I lost to him, right? Yeah. Well, after you ran him back and, and lose his final pulls to get out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds about right. I don't know what you guys have been talking about, but is this is this the same event where you pissed off um, Ryan Hart? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I think that was uh, last time. No, no, that, that, right? that was the SS after. That was SS next year. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys, you guys went okay, uh, okay. SS, OHN, BAM, and then no, SS. No, it's, it's, it's SS, BAM, OHN, and then SS again, I think. Nice, nice, nice. Man, you guys went to heaps of events before I turned yeah, up. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> that second SS was so bad for Injustice, man. Oh my god. No, no casual setup. Um, no, what's it called? One setup to run the tournament on. No one Jesus. knew that was running the tournament, so in, like, fucking, what's it? Tolf ended up running the tournament on the day for us. Wasn't it not patched as well? Um, then someone yeah, had to use their Wi Fi to patch it. Yeah. <laughs> or their data. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Bam was like that too, but Bam, Bam, um, oh, we had to patch ourselves as well. Wow. But uh, at least, like, they did that for us, fucking, for this one. Yeah, oh, that that was such a bad fucking tournament, man. It took us like it was it was it was running one setup. It was like a seventeen man bracket on one setup, and it took like fucking I don't know seven hours, six hours or something. <laughs> Incredible. Dude, like I was I was so dead. Like I was I was thinking, I was thinking my straight fighter pools matches. I didn't even care. Like, I just wanted to get out to go eat, man. <clears throat> yeah, it sucks when that happens. Not yeah, that, happens that was a really bad tournament. Well, it's fun out there because we, we got drunk and we were walking down the streets of Melbourne drunk. That was, that was so fun. Good times. Getting get kicked out of bars for, for singing shit. <laughs> so I've got to gotta get um, an opinion on this matter. I was just thinking about it. So after, like, around that patch time in Injustice, I just stopped playing. And I'm pretty yeah. sure I just went back to playing Cough heaps. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that was also when I just started playing um, heaps in 98 and 2K2 as well. But then MKX comes out. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't think I've I don't think I'd spoken to any of you guys really in a, in quite a while, and I can't yeah, remember that's... if I messaged you or Vlad, and I was like, hey, can I get in the WhatsApp? Mm. <laughs> What's the I reaction? Was everyone just like, who the fuck does this who guy think he is? is Come, comes out and back in the scene when he wants. <laughs> I don't remember. Fuck. We ended uh, up leaving anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, that was heaps later. Uh, that was later. I don't remember. Like, yeah, like. You know, the what the WhatsApp became a th actually we, we, was that was that WhatsApp there for injustice? No, dude. The thing, the Facebook group that I commented on. All right, yeah. That was the pre WhatsApp era. Yeah, pre WhatsApp era. Well, the shit. um the King's comics. Like if you scroll up to the first it post, it's, no, no. it's like January 2014. Oh. And you're like, hey guys, I was thinking of starting games at my house. Holy shit! shit. God damn, I, I gotta hold this back up. Yeah. But yeah, like at that point, like you know, when I first started running casuals on my house, there was just me and Isaac. This is post SS, where like there was the horseshit SS, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so like, it was literally just me and Isaac playing the game by ourselves for like the longest time. Um, and then when Isaac dropped off, that's when everyone else like came back into the scene. <sighs> Good times. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, we're reminiscing, but that was only two years ago. I know. So, like... That's what I mean. Whenever anyone brings up the year. Of injustice, I'm like that was really only two years ago. Are you kidding me? It's actually ridiculous. <laughs> Something about NRS games that I mean, if they release a new game next year, that would have been four games in five, six years. So every year and a half, new game. Yeah, and this is a every game too. feels like an error. So yeah, definitely. It's weird. Definitely. Like injustice feels like so long ago. I hope this doesn't die. I really hope it doesn't get replaced. As I'm very much enjoying it, there's still so much shit to learn in this game. Yeah, man. So much shit. Actually, speaking of, like, uh, I don't know, like, I was thinking about that, like, you know, there was a concept online, 
that I was having issues before, but I found a new OS method that should help me deal with that issue. So it gives me like a 50-50, like it was around, I was talking to you about it like ages ago, having a 50-50 on block OS that auto chases down the back dash. Yeah, yeah. I think I actually figured out how to do it like properly now, even though it's gonna be fucking super hard. Yeah. But I think I, sh I think I can do it now. And then so it forces you to to delay and wake up the mess of it, but should be good. Should be good. Yeah. You know, I was watching some of the because I wanted to see how my play changed from BAM to OHN. So I watched, I rewatched our match at OHN, and man, even your play has come a long way since then. Like you, you're so much cleaner now, and just oh, it's scary. <laughs> Like it's the, it's so I haven't changed. The backstab. <laughs> I had no I had no hockey game back then. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. I legit had no hockey because fucking I couldn't knock down my combo. And your um your stagger game was not even a thing. Oh like, yeah, at least I didn't think forward too recently. Yeah, exactly. Well, not recently, but like, but like, yeah, but like six months ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, game's not even twelve months. It's like twelve months old. But anyway. Nah. Jesus, what's going on with this video? Anyway, um, so let's just talk about the last topic and wrap this up. We've been an hour and a half. I'm surprised we actually lasted this long. Nah. But so, um, in light of semi-recent events, Googie was asking a question that he wanted us to talk about, which is what our opinions are of um, sandbagging or intentionally not playing certain people with certain characters for the benefit, for your own benefit, um, in future tournaments. So what do you guys think of that particular manner? Do you think it's okay to, um, to be sandbag. strategic about casuals pre-tournament, or do you think it's rude? What do you think? <laughs> uh, I don't know, Vlad, do you want to go first? Um, I don't know, like, sometimes it might come across as sandbagging, like... If I played someone like I started playing Kenshi, it's not necessarily me sandbagging, it's just playing a different character, you know? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you kind of want to play that new character, like, at the normal skill level. Yep. Um, but if you are purposely sandbagging, like, what are the chances you're actually going to run into that person, though? Yeah, it's pretty low. It's pretty low. Um, Depends on pools and seating and shit. Like, if, it, if it does detract too much from the game, and, like, you purposely avoid playing people, Maybe much more of an issue then. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, we're just collectively, you know, and we're too small to to do stuff like that, but... Yeah, yeah. I at, see that. At the same time, I don't think anyone can really fault you if you want to do it. Yeah. Eric? Alright, so, all right, so, you know, like, the, the two arguments are, right, like, you know, if you, if you sandbag, you win, like, and, and you win because of that, like, people are like, yeah, like the Dodge credit you win because you know you won by gimmicks or some shit, or you won by them not knowing the matchup, right? Yep. If you, but another another than you know, if you run the matchup with them and you still beat them, you know, it clearly shows you outplayed them and stuff. You know, so that would be the ideal scenario where you, you, know, you, you just play out of beating them. Mm. Um, but yeah, like, because it is a major, I, I, I think it's I don't think it's that bad. Like you know, everyone hides tech, you know, fucking Sheen hides tech, mm. right? Yeah. If you read the article on, on Event Hub, like about Sheen, like you know, he shares tech within his own scene. Yeah, but he hides tech, you know, for the major tournaments. Obviously, like you know, his major tournament, like he's thinking world world tournaments. But for us, you know, like you know, between all of us, we share tech, you know, like yeah. you know, in the Sydney scene. But yeah. you know, the, the outsiders per se are the, are the interstaters. So you, you, everyone does hide it, hide tech, you know, even though it's not the best idea. But because our scene is so small, it's you know, this is all just state for state pride, you know. It, like you know, everyone. Is backing their own side, you know. All of us in Sydney want Sydney to win. Everyone in Melbourne wants Melbourne to win. You know, like fucking the the OHN Grand Finals. That that like <laughs> encapsulates it perfectly. You know, all the yeah. Melbourne guys are rooting for Googie. All the Sydney guys are rooting for Arnold. Yeah. Um. So, so I don't. I, I, I don't. I honestly think it's fine to like the what's it called the, the sandbag or high tech. Like that, that's fine. Like it's sandbagging. Like it, it's sandbagging to the point where it's super obvious. We're just like you know, dude, what's the point of playing then? You know, then, then fair enough, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you know, at least play normally and shit. But like you know, maybe just hold back a few strats or some shit. Yeah. Mm. It's like uh, um, but it's, it becomes bad once you ha if if you high tech and sandbag your own scene, other than your own state and shit, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my my thoughts are that it's like. There's always more to it than it seems in some cases. Like, uh, it's gonna be hard to talk about. <laughs> 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 um, 
I guess I can, names. Just, I can say this without naming names, <laughs> but I recently decided to dismiss games with a particular person, um, <gasps> partly <laughs> for a couple of reasons. One, because I play the shit out of this person all the fucking time, and it gets boring. And two, because they're practicing the matchup, or they want to practice a particular matchup, which would only help them against me in any real situation anyway. So like the other night I went to pick Goro and this person asked me to pick Quan because they wanted to learn the Quan matchup. And I'm just like, Ugh. whatever, I guess I will, but I don't really want to, mainly because I just wanted to fucking play Goro. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know, I just think, um, yeah, there's two sides. Part partly because I don't always want to play that particular character in that particular matchup. Partly because... I, in myself, I don't think I'm 100% the best player, so I'll take an advantage that I can get. Yeah, like, you're, you're playing the smart, man's, the smart man's fight. Yeah, and it's like, I, when I play online as well, when I play basically anyone, I stop it. I I, I, I basically do a first attend and then leave, because I just don't want to play the same person over and over. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't see the value. Like, if you and me, Aaron, played every day... <laughs> We're advancing our meta. But yeah, ex <laughs> exactly. If we played every day for, like, two hours or whatever... Um, up until BAM. Yes, like, our execution and our spacing and stuff might get better, but we could still, if that was the only matchup we played, we could still get fucked in pools by something that we've never seen before. Yeah, it's like, like it's, we'll, we'll play a meta 3 and then they run meta, meta 1 stuff and you're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's like, uh, like, what I've been doing playing lately is basically just playing a shitload of different people online, because, I don't know, I feel like that's more valuable for me at this point. So I mm. think, like, it's, I don't know, I, d I don't care, like, my mentality in terms of the meta and advancing the meta in general is share stuff, obviously. Yeah. So, if you ask me the same question in, like, straight off the BAM, I'd, like, happily break down matchups for someone. Yeah. But considering there's a major coming yeah, up. Yeah, a major in, like, two, how many weeks is there now? Two weeks? Two weeks. So, it's like... Three, yeah. It's two, it, no, it's two. So, like, I don't... No, I don't do. I, like, I Holy myself, shit. I'm exactly like... exactly two weeks, god damn. Exactly. Fuck. Exactly. I'm oh like, my God. why Why would I, you know, one, I don't feel like playing this character, so two, why would I... Uh, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it just doesn't seem um, beneficial to me. Like, I think some people won't like that attitude, but my opinion is everyone should be selfish. Yeah, like, to some extent, yeah. Yeah, like, do, do what you gotta do, because that's, that's... Yeah, like, internet is playing to win. Playing to win, guys. Yeah, so... It's like Dragon posted this the other day on Twitter. He's like, um, what do I do when someone, when I'm playing someone and, you know, they ask me, they ask me what was going on in a situation. Like, do I tell them? Am I a dick if I don't tell them? Or blah, blah, blah. Depends. Like, if it's in tournament and you're like, you're vastly outclassing them, then fair enough. But yeah. if it's a tie set and, you're, and they're like, <laughs> imagine like, you know, it's 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, um, you know, like, you, like and, but both of those games are super close. Yeah. The guy leaves over and it's like, oh, by the way, when you're doing this, how do I punish that? <laughs> yeah, no, just like... Lie to him. <laughs> if you want to be a dick, just lie. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> so what like I, you can uppercut. I basically said to him, because, like, I've noticed as well, like, I've looked in matchup threads and you see, like, like, I'm surprised Fox is even making the videos he's making now. Like, yeah. you'll look in the Molina forums, Foxy never posts real detailed information. It's all because yeah, it's they... Like, yeah, they they have like, their own yeah. strats that they don't want to disclose, and that's fine. Yeah. So, like, what I said to Dragon was, like, um, you don't have to say shit. It's up to the... It's up to the upper mid-level... Uh, yeah, the upper mid-level players to find the tech and share the tech. But mm. it's up to the tournament players to do what they have to do to win, basically. Yeah. Well, that's my attitude, at least. <laughs> yeah. If, if you think up to this point, right, like, no. You, like, you guys know most of my fucking OS tech, right? Yeah. And also, like I'm sure it's gone around now because of the like the online guys sort of know about it. But uh, for the rest of the world, a lot of people still don't still don't know that shit. Well, like, no. you know, what? Huh? Honest, honestly, Aaron, the uh, online guys would have seen that you do stuff, but uh, a lot of those people would also hear you say OS Tech, and this is the first time they've heard about it. Like, it's nah, trust me, the people don't like it. But I, I showed Carla, and Carla like <laughs> showed everyone. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, so like uh, that 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 takes going around now, British, or like, or at least people trying to replicate it. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, people don't understand the value of that tech. You know, like, you know, Carl sees OS and he's like, oh my god, must be broken, right? 
In terms of Cry, it's, it's kind of stupid, but for other characters, it doesn't help everyone that much. I guess I, I, I see it helping uh, Kana, but like, you know, Kana was like, oh yeah, I, I found an OS for Kung Lao as well. I'm like, it doesn't really do much though. Like, for mine, there's a, there's a big change in the situation based yeah. on whether or not I do it. But yours is just like, cool, it happens, but it doesn't do anything. Actually, yeah, um, sorry, just quickly, I was going to mention that as well. It's like, um, Sagan as well, for example, yeah. I've played him two or three times in tournament against his Kung Lao and he's beaten me in all those sets. Yeah. But every time I play him online, he picks Mournful or something else. So whether yeah. whether that's... Con- Intentional or not. Yeah, whether that's him intentionally being like, I know I can beat him in tournament with Kung Lao, so I'm not going to not gonna let him see it. Or if he's just like, I'm sick of playing Kung Lao, so I'll play Katana. Either way, yeah, like, I don't I don't fair, give a fair. shit. Yeah, either, either way, I don't care because I see like, that, that's fine. Like, I would <laughs> probably do the same. So yeah. if if he's purposely choosing someone else because he doesn't want me to learn the matchup, that's fine. I don't give a shit. It like it's I I feel like it's my job to understand the match because there's other resources, right? There's videos, there's the yeah. lab, there's a whole lot there's, of shit. There's, yeah, you can break the match footage, you can do anything you want. Yeah, exactly. There's, like you know, it, it's onus is on the is on the player to learn all this shit. Yeah, I think so. But if people uh, think I'm a dick, so be it. <laughs> uh, you're now signing up signing up as Dick Joy. Dick Joy, that's right. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll um, humor human human and I'll eat crab joy. <laughs> <sighs> um, but, uh, um, yeah, that's our that's our opinion on it at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any any yeah. other like, I've, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? I'm happy to wrap up a bit early because it's already getting late. So actually, the last thing right was uh, I was playing Boyland the other night, right? Yep. Actually, like this is a big cost, right? And then, like you know, I was running cryo like, 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 like crazy. But like, you know, after like, my last bad performance, and then I was like, you know, I got to focus on Sky again to yep, remember yep. how to play, right? <laughs> anyway, so I'm like, okay, I've been playing so much cryo. I actually want to take a break. But so like, the first few games I played cryo, right? And I was like, I started trolling by playing, you know, reptiles, when ninja. So like, you know, like, you, like you, you know, my plethora of characters right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, you know, I'm, I'm running, you know, everyone just, you know, just for fun. Fuck man, I'm tired of playing cryo. And then. What's it good? Every time it comes against boy, you know, we're just like, I'm in party with Carl and stuff, right? And Carl's like, I give him cry, man, give him cry. <laughs> I'm like, all right, fine, you know, unpick my character, go with the cry. And I was like, fuck, man, like, all I want to do is play fucking Jason and do unstoppable shit. Mm. Ah, man, so well, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was more. <laughs> uh, nah. I'm sorry, Sean. Uh, we all like playing other characters too, man. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We all like playing other characters. Yeah. Because it does get. Speaking of, dude, like, I forgot how fun Rattal is. Fuck, man. That guy's so fun to play. It is fun. Like similar, similar to what you said. Like pre, um, exp- no, pre last online tournament. I think I played yeah. Taz like most days for like yeah, a week. Yeah, I remember that fucking hell, goddamn. And it's just like, after that, I've played him like twice, because I'm just like, I don't I don't care to play Taz that much anymore, because I've played him so much. I want to play other... Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's more fun to play more different people. Mm. I think. Yeah. It's, which is... The o- online thing's big, must make use of it, man. Which is other advice, actually, other tournament advice. Get your, um... Practice surviving pools by yeah. playing a lot of different people, so you can yeah, play random, so you can so you can like learn to adapt on the fly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, speaking of the, the best story, right? Um, you know, I, I, I jumped on to play some random, right? I was playing some Kano player. I don't know some no name, right? And I'm like, I, I know this matchup. I get I get fucking wrecked. I don't I, like I don't even take a round, right? Yeah. I'm like, okay, shit. Okay, I actually gotta play serious. Gotta figure out what the fuck he's doing. I, like, you know, I'm not sandbagging. You know, I'm also playing problem, right? I got yeah. wrecked still. There was like you know, this motherfucker just wakes up with raw every single time. He like he doesn't care, you know. He's oh, he just always goes straight. He always goes sh- goes straight into fifty fifties. So playing random like that, you know, like you, you can you can get randomed out by stuff like that in pools, man. You gotta practice for fighting shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Like unless you're playing some, unless you're playing a crazy tempo control character like Katana or something, so you don't need to like deal with that stuff. God damn, man, you better practice to get fight random shit. That's right. You really do, and it's like not only that, but developing like general strategies for your character that deal with like the most common reactions to think to things yeah helps as well all that kind of shit uh but yeah that's two weeks away we, we all gonna do our prep very soon have you got your flights booked Vlad? yeah yeah pretty yeah. thank fuck <laughs> yeah they do <laughs> alright um just need to stop doing the silence first yeah right do you guys have anything else you just want to say or can we wrap this thing up uh no, I'm good oh, we're good, good? alright sweet 
All right, well, thanks for coming on again, guys, and thanks, Vlad, oh. for coming on at the last minute. Um, remember, everybody, get on Twitter, spread that hashtag, hashtag OzMKX4ESL. Talk about it all you can there. YSB, you know, I probably should have mentioned that earlier. YSB, what are we up to, 41? I think it's 41. No. YSB 41 is this weekend, and it should be streaming on a Good Parts channel like usual. So mm-hmm. we'll tweet about that when it goes live. So tune into that. Tweet about the matches. Dude, matches. dude, I'm, I'm going through the BAM registrants list. No. Yeah. Judge and Venge are coming BAM. Holy yeah, shit. no, yeah, yeah, Castiel told me earlier. That's crazy, yeah. That's sick. Fuck, that's, that's sick. sick. I think MKX. Fuck, that's awesome. Yeah, I like it. So yeah. Yeah, okay, we've got 25 entrants. 25 entrants. Oh, jeez. When's it end? Um, not sure. Hopefully, hopefully we get... A lot of the last like half the Sydney guys still haven't fucking registered. Yeah, exactly, anyway. exactly. Um, so yeah, That's so true. make sure to spread the hashtag and keep talking about it because we don't want ESL Australia to think that we're lazy and already over the idea. Mm. Um, apart from that, is Googie having an online tournament soon? Do we know? Uh, not too sure. I haven't seen anything. Okay. Well, we don't know about that yet, but we'll hear about it at some point, I'm sure, and that'll be in the Facebook group. Um, so thanks very much. Holy shit. What? <laughs> Bill Richard's belly slumped his, um, brutality. That's sick. Wait, you didn't <laughs> What, is it the throw or the, like, belly charge? Alright, let's belly just shut up for a second. Alright, thank you very yeah, much for listening, <laughs> everyone. You can find me at CabJoy on Twitter. You can find Aaron at Gilbags Hong and Vlad at, I think, at VStankovsky35. They'll all be in the description. Yeah. And... I'll see you, we'll all see you guys in the next podcast where actually it won't be, oh shit, where are we now? We are here and then in two weeks time, it'll be the night before we leave for BAM. It'll be in three weeks. So we'll do a post YSB, post BAM. Um, so post BAM podcast is going to be pretty sick, I think. And yep. Maybe yeah. maybe maybe we can, um, when we get pulls, we can sit down and do a prediction video. Without. Oh yeah, we should do that. It'll be fun. We'll yeah. do that. As opposed to me in the wind at work. <laughs> alone. <laughs> oh, man. something right this time. <laughs> oh no, like, fuck, that was so far off. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, and uh, the, you're still more accurate. It was like, you know, Baxter was like, Nat's for sure gonna make top eight, right? I think, I think well. Baxter was just being nice to his buddy. <laughs> anyway, yeah. thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you guys next time. Yeah. See ya.